I went ahead and painted this thing, and, and I know this video is running pretty long, so in the interest of time, I'm not going to show that part, but if you've watched any of my videos, you know how I paint. I start out with this General Finishes Enduro Sanding Sealer, lay three or four really good coats on it, let it set up and dry real good, shoot it with my HVLP sprayer, and then I come in and start painting. Now, I usually use General Finishes Milk Paint, and I love that stuff. I, I'm used to using it. I know how to mix it. Uh, I know how it behaves, and that's just what I like to use, but the problem is my local woodcraft store went out of business because they couldn't work out you know, the terms of their franchise renewal, so I kind of lost my source on that. And I'm always hinky about trying new things, but anyway, what I did was I went to Sherwin-Williams and I got some of this stuff right here, all surface enamel. It's an acrylic latex and it's a satin color. And I had them mix me up a color called Secret Garden. SW6181, that color right there. Problem was, it came out, it was, it was a little bit too green. It was almost like a hunter green. So what I did, they just filled up their, their mixing machine. They use this, they call it Color Cast Eco Toner. That's what they, they mix their colors with. And they just filled that thing up and there was just a smidge left in this. This is black. And I asked them if I could have it, so they gave it to me. And what I did when I got home was I mixed up 12 ounces of this stuff and one ounce of this. And I don't think I've, I could have hit OD green any better. So I was really pleased with how that color turned out. This stuff did a good job. It shot really well. It mixed really well. And, you know, I was pleased. So I mixed it down, you know, these two, and then got the color I wanted, thinned it down with a little bit of water, gave it two or three shots of this General Finishes uh, extender. Four or five really good coats of paint. Now this stuff took a little bit longer to dry and cure than, than the General Finishes, so I let, it, I let it dry overnight. Then I came in with General Finishes polycrylic satin and just laid the poly to it. And I get out here, I get to shooting poly, and before I know it, I've shot 10 or 12 coats, but that's okay. Now before I shot the poly on the bumper, I wanted to do something to kind of give this thing some character. So I cut some stencils out of poster board and I taped them onto the bumper and shot white over it. Now, it turned out okay, but this is the first time I've ever done anything like this and I really, I need to, I need to refine my technique. I need to learn a better way to do this because what would happen is every time I'd pass my, my sprayer over it, well, it, it would kind of lift up the lettering a little bit. So I got some overspray and some scatter in there. And I'm not, I'm not terribly dissatisfied with it, but I'm not terribly happy about it either. So um, I need to learn a better technique. If any of y'all out there know a better way to do this, then let me know because I want to know. Uh, but it's okay. I've never seen anything military that was stenciled that didn't have scatter and you know, overspray on it. So maybe this will just make it look a little bit more authentic. Let me go ahead and grab it, bring it over here and show you what I got. And I'll show you how we're going to do the final assembly on this. So I think it's turning out pretty good and I'm pretty pleased with it. I've gone ahead and put together this side. So I'm going to show you over here how to do that. So let's start with this little running light. Now what I did on this running light was I cut a couple of strips of just old scrap half inch plywood. And I drilled a little bitty hole through the plywood and down into the light. And then I took a, a number six half inch wood screw and secured it. And what that's going to do is allow me to just feed it through this hole right here. And then I can attach it in the back. Now I'll probably come back in at some point and paint that green just to, you know, pretty it up. But that's how that works. So let me go ahead and get this thing screwed in. I'll put a couple more in here, but you can see that's going to hold that really good that way. And there's the front of it. Now what I've done on this little light housing here is I came in with a little bitty drill bit, maybe a 332nd, just on the inside lip of this housing and drilled a hole. I don't know if you can see that on each side. And then went ahead and slipped it into place and started me a pilot hole up into the wood. And that way I can come back in with that little number six wood screw and just kind of secure it in place. So let me do that. Don't need to tighten it real tight, just snug it up. 
That looks good. Now this headlight lens and retaining ring assembly is all held into place by a screw that's coming through all the way from the back, coming out here, and then locked down with one of these little acorn nuts. I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty small. And the way that I did that was I laid everything up and got it lined up and in place, and then I took an 1164 drill bit and just ran holes, plumbed through all the way to the back. Of course, I lined it up and tried to give it some symmetry and all that kind of stuff. Now, the problem is these acorn nuts are stainless steel and they're, they're kind of blingy looking. I didn't want it to look like that, so I wanted to age these acorn nuts, and I'm getting ready to show you how I did that. Now, what you're going to need to make your acorn nut look old is you're going to need something to hold it with, a pair of pliers. You're going to need a blowtorch. You're going to need some chewing tobacco. This red man will probably work pretty good, but if you can get a hold of some plug tobacco, like that old bloodhound that makes that real black spit, that'd be good too. And of course, you're going to need a spit cup. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, I don't chew tobacco, and I'm thinking this would be a pretty good time to start. But if you're not going to, I think what you could probably do is take like used coffee grounds and mix them with some water and use that. Let me take a little break, chew some of this tobacco up, get me a cup full of spit, and I'll come back and show you how to do this. All right, then, I've got me a pretty good amount of tobacco spit in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this nut up until it just turns cherry red. And it takes a couple of minutes to get there. Just the simple act of heating it up will discolor it a little bit. Turns it more of a blue though when you do it that way. That thing's cherry red right now. I'm just gonna stick it down there in that spit and it's, it's rumbling and bubbling down in there. Here in a minute it's going to pop. There it goes. I'm just going to hold it down in there for a minute or two. Until it kind of quits bubbling. Right there, not, you won't be able to see it, but that's just an old looking screw and nut. I'm gonna go over here and run some cold water on it and uh, clean it off. And then if you do it a couple of times, it'll keep aging it a little bit more each time. Now at this point, we're ready to take our lens assembly and just go ahead and put it together. Take our acorn nuts. You don't have to tighten them real tight. Just a couple of turns. There we are. Looks good. Now what I had to do to get these lights working was I had to get a, a 12 foot replacement cord for a lamp. And where it's so long, that's good. It gave me enough extra wire to do some of this hinky wiring that I got to do. Bought a little switch right here that kind of rolls on and off. Some of these cords will come with that already on, but this one didn't, so I went ahead and put it on. This is a replacement socket for a lamp and it's got these little metal, metal wings on it and it works really good because all you have to do is just lay it up into that light housing and it just snaps right into place. This is a seven and a half watt night light bulb and that thing works great. It puts out just the right amount of light to make this thing look cool. Of course you got two lights and you're wiring them up in series. So you got one wire coming off that light and I got another wire that'll be coming to this one. Then I kind of tie them off together. And then, you know, then there's your switch and down here's your plug. So it's not, not real hard to wire up. So let me go ahead and finish wiring this thing up and get these, these wires cleaned up a little bit. And I'll come back and show you how to wire up these running lights. 
Okay, so I've got everything wired up, and the way that I did it, like I said before, these, these lights are wired in series. So if you can kind of imagine in your mind, if you took these two, this white wire here and the one off the other light and twisted it together, did the same thing with the blacks and twisted them together, then I came in here with the power cord, took one of the leads off the power cord and twisted it to the white, took the other lead and twisted it to the black, and that's how I'm getting power to this. Now I put one of these little, uh, like these little roller rocker switches, and I put it on there, and, and I mounted it kind of high, and that way, because it's going to hang down, but when it hangs down, the bumper is going to be in front of it, so you won't see it. I pulled all the wire through some of this plastic cabling armor, and that cleaned everything up, and I was able to mount it in place and just give it a good fit and finish. Now, the running lights aren't made to be run off house power, and I didn't want to fool with having to, you know, figure out getting a transformer and all that kind of stuff. So what I've done is I've wired these things up to run off a nine volt battery. The way I did it, I started out by buying one of the little you know plugs. You wouldn't have to, you can make your own, but for a couple of dollars, it just saved me a little bit of aggravation. So this you know plugs right into the light and it has little pigtails coming off of it. So it kind of makes keeping up with your wiring a little bit easier. Then I bought one of these little, little hobby boxes or a project box. You can buy them at Radio Shack or an electronic store. And inside here is a nine volt battery. Of course, I had to get one of the little plugs for a nine volt battery. There's some soldering involved in this, but it's not that big a deal. And I went ahead and put a switch on it so that I can turn them on and off. Basically, it wires up exactly the same as these lights here. I went ahead and hid those lights in this cabling, and I think it turned out really good. It kind of gives a nice little fit and finish to it. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do before I stamp this project done and send it off to the record books is I'm going to come in here with some of this screen, like you'd put on a screen door or a window. And I'm going to probably layer it about four deep and come in behind this grill and just staple it in place. And what, what it'll do, hopefully, is it'll kind of black it out a little bit, but I'm kind of hoping it'll make it appear like maybe there's a radiator back behind that grill. I happen to have some of this laying around, so that's what I'm going to use, but I got to thinking you could probably take a, a piece of black burlap and do the same thing and get a pretty good effect. So there's my Jeep grill wall art, and I'm really pleased with how this thing turned out, not only because I think it looks pretty neat and kind of authentic, but also because ain't nobody else got one except me, and that's always pretty cool. I'm going to put some information in the description box of this video about some of the stuff that I use, some of the parts. That way, if you do take a notion to try it yourself, you won't have to reinvent my wheel. And if you do build one yourself and come up on better ways to do stuff, let me know. I'm thinking about putting these things out there for sale or maybe selling a parts kit or something like that. Hadn't really decided. Either way, there'll be information in the description box of the video, maybe a link over to the website where you can go take another look at it. Hope you enjoyed the video and, and learned something and got some of your own ideas. And whether or not you want to build this exact project, I hope that you took away some tips, tricks, and hints that you can use in the projects that you're working on. As always, if you like my videos, remember, give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. You know that my method of painting it's an acrylics latex. Daggone it. This, this is just card, you know, like, a, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? Construction paper, poster board. So let's start with this little running light. Let me show you how to do it. Now what I did on this running light into the and then slipped it on up into the hole. That didn't sound right, did it? Man, I wish my neighbor would get off his doggone tractor. What you're gonna need, man, I wish he'd turn his tractor off. Godly. Hell, can't light my torch. Came down and kind of pigtailed those off and that's not really what I was wanting to say. I'm thinking about putting these things out there for sale and I just that up too. Honey, do I look fat?